Welcome to Dialogue 23. Ah, it happens again. <laughs> now, a good representation from all over the world, and yeah, you will have noted that Italy is on top. They cheetah. <laughs> Carlo just signed up the day before yesterday, and they also present a winner of the competition this year, so no wonder. Um, we don't have as many overseas as we usually have, but I guess traveling might pick up again. Now, <coughs> a special welcome to the two competition winners, Andrea Pisera from Milan. Is he here? Please get up. <laughs> He's a young person. He must have been spending too much time in the bar last <laughs> night. <laughs> so anyways, we usually present the winners here so that you have a chance to talk to them because on Wednesday is only one day left. Right, the other one is Alexander Block, who is uh, the professional winner. There. <laughs> Working at one of our latest customers, insurance company from Germany. Now, about a quarter of us are here at a Dialogue user meeting for the first time. So a very warm welcome to you guys. And about a third of us are from Dialogue. So please, guys, get up. Of course, there's a lot of them, aren't there? <laughs> <laughs> and yes, dialogue is growing. Um, the first of the guys who joined us after last user meeting is Stefan. He came to us from IBM, but not because he was from IBM, but because he wrote a book about APL seen from the point of a programmer. And we talked to him a lot, and in the end, we obviously agreed that it would be a good thing for him to join Dialogue. Now, at Dialogue, we usually have people do what they like to do and what they are good at. And uh, Stefan has a lot of qualities, so where he ends up exactly at the end, well, maybe you'll see over the years to come. The next one who joined us was Jada. You might have seen Jada around. Um, she's up there at the back. She joined the admin team. She's also educated as a lawyer. Well, not a lawyer exactly, but she got a legal um, degree. So that's a big relief for quite a few of us that she can look over the contracts and point out the sore spots that we need to negotiate. Now, the next one is quite scary. That's apps. He's not here. not here, right. He's doing his job. Yeah, yeah, supposedly. <laughs> <laughs> it's a scary thing when an organization needs more than one IT person. But imagine the amount of platforms that we support, the amount of people we have spread all over the globe, and the amount of versions we need to cut of Dialog APL. I mean, it's no wonder that we need more than one. <clears throat> The next one is Arush, who is here from India, where he works at home, <laughs> mostly. Um, he's helping us doing a new test suite for Dialogue APL um, and working hard at that, finding new ways to test APL um, by using mechanisms that are not involved in the primitive that's being tested. So, and finally, just a couple of weeks ago, Mike Mingard joined us. You might have seen Mike before, at least. He helped us at the 2016 50th uh, celebration of APL. And we've been working with Mike for quite some years. And now we've stolen him from Optima Systems, but they might lend him back once in a while. Now, we also said goodbye to Jeff, 
who's been here since the very beginning, even before I joined Dialogue. <coughs> he couldn't be here this year because of some family uh, obligations, but he's promised that he will be at the next user meeting and maybe spin us a tale about being retired or something else, who knows. It's also no secret that my best before date is approaching, so I will retire by the end of this year and I'll still come to the user meetings because that's too much fun, but um, I won't do the day-to-day -day managing of dialogue anymore. Now, should you be worried? Well, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> no, because well, the 1st of January, Stine will take over as Managing Director of, D of Dialogue. And if you do recognize her last name, yeah, you're right, it's, uh, it's Morden and my daughter. And as such, we are not afraid of nepotism. So, <laughs> actually, we've spent the last couple of years um, making sure that the transition will be smooth and that she now fully into the picture. And she's also got some very good people around her. So, you'll be in good hands and you'll see, I think, over this meeting. Now, <clears throat> Dialogue is growing, <coughs> not only in the sense of how many people work at Dialogue, but also in terms of income. Now, most of our income is tied to our customer success through the runtime uh, licenses and through the royalty licenses, which, of which there's quite a few, and also through special contracts with large customers. Now, we spend every predictable penny and cent, keeping dialogue up to date and spreading the word about APL. Now, most years, there's also something unpredicted, unless everything conspires against us, which it did in one year, actually 2016. <laughs> but apart from that, every year, or other year it has been some profit, which benefits the shareholders, which in our case is actually some large customers and the employees of Dialogue. Now, one smart guy once told me that was when the scoreboards became very famous and the management technology to watch he said, but don't watch the scoreboard, keep the eye on the ball, because otherwise you lose the game. And very, Warren Buffett sort of expanded that a bit to watch the whole playing field <coughs> and not the scoreboards. Now our eyes are focused on APL, its potential and its customers, and that's our business and that's what we do. So, that brings me to one of two things that I really need to get off the ground before I retire. And the first one is the APL Trust Fund. Now, APL is a really rewarding career in so many ways. You keep learning a lot, learning about computers, which is not so interesting, but learning about a lot of professional topics that the customers are using it for. You learn stuff and you can easily express your solutions and your thoughts to the computer using APL. <clears throat> and it's often a very prosperous career. Now, Morton and I personally, and Dialogue in general, would like to pay some of our ill-gotten gains forward. We believe also that there are like-minded people out there <coughs> who has worked <coughs> with APL, had a long and good career with it, 
and who also want to pay some of it forward. So the dialogue board has approved the initial funding to create a charitable fund with the purpose of promoting APL for the benefit of education and science. Now, this is, when you make a trust fund, you have to choose between some purposes that are approved by the government. And science and mathematics is one of them. And then you have to get your own purpose in, and that's the programming language APL. That's what it's going to be about. It's going to be a charitable company. Um, that's the legal entity that has to report to the <coughs> company's house. This will ho hold the assets uh, pledged to, to the fund. Oops. It's going all wrong here. <coughs> <coughs> And the fund is also obliged to report to and comply with the rules of the Charity Commission. This gives you sort of the best guarantee that what we are doing is correct and it's reported to no less than two public um, institutions. The Articles of Association are now ready, however, we still need to research whether if you donate to the fund from as a US citizen, will that also be tax exempt, like it will be in Europe? And we might have to make a fund in the United States as well. So we are not at the end of this um, voyage yet. Now, the fund will be sort of handled completely digitally you apply for support digitally, you pledge digitally, and the board meetings will probably be held via Zoom or Teams or something like that. <coughs> and the committees, sort of the board can appoint committees to deal with various aspects of the funding. We'll probably also meet, there won't be a physical address and if there has to be, it'll be at the lawyers or the auditors. So it should be easy to reach the fund from all over the world. And hopefully it'll make a difference in the, um, in the spread of APL into academia, for instance. Obviously, we hope that some of you will also support the APL Trust Fund and maybe even become active in the work. Or maybe even apply for some funding for some work you want to do. <coughs> now the next thing, um, <laughs> I've been speaking about that for quite some year, haven't I? Now, last time it took just as long. <coughs> and back then we had a really good website for all our customers. And, but the purpose of a website is to drive new users into your website to tell them about you. And when new users landed there, they were probably quite confused about what we were doing. Um, and the information about APL was not really that obvious. So the new one, we are trying to do better. <clears throat> and we have promised each other that it will be launched before New Year 2024. I even dare put the year on. Um, <clears throat> it's very close to being there. Let me give you... <laughs> no, 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 no. No, no, it's before the 1st of January 2024. Don't... <laughs> <laughs> so at least there's a strong warning when you arrive here. <laughs> and maybe if you don't want to change the way you think, you're not really suited for APL. Now, 
There are some items here, news. There's a really good <laughs> clip of Aaron explaining <laughs> what APL is. <laughs> Thank you. He goes on for about two minutes. Um. APL strips away a lot of boilerplate fluff, but it does so in a way without over-abstracting the problem. So it delivers an ultra-high-level, high-productivity programming language that allows you to reason at a high level at the machine level. So you, it, it allows you to do something called mechanical sympathy, and, or to have mechanical sympathy. And so you get a programming language that is basically an executable mathematical notation that performs oftentimes faster than handwritten C code and other stuff. And it's so he goes on for a couple of minutes, and <laughs> but it's it, it's very precise explanation of what is APL, what a, what is APL, and what's the benefits. So <clears throat> then there's the um, it's not just the language. There's all the interfaces to the outside world, and there's some small examples and some. Um, you can say statements you can put into your uh, qualification of why you want to use it. And there's the team. And if you want to see the whole team, you can click and you'll get to it. And if you know, want to know more about <coughs> someone in particular, for instance, Morton, you'll get sort of a bio, the blog posts he made, the videos he took part in, oops. So there's a whole bunch of stuff. One of the things that this website does, <coughs> <coughs> it is that it utilizes all the video material we have from all the user meetings, all the other conferences and places where we have posted all the tutorials that's been made by, for instance, Adam and Richard Park over time. Um, there's a video library. And in the past, what you had to do, you had to look through all the user meetings to find the video that you really liked. Or you had to go and look for it in different places. Now here you can simply search for um, a topic. Like you can search for for chess, and you'll get two different Morton's original one where he spoke about Unicode and how you could use those symbols to um, make a chess game in Excel. That has quite a few views on YouTube, by the way, but probably because of the chess in the title and not so much because of APL. And Adam did one recently. <coughs> now, you can also choose to look for a particular person. If, for instance, you wanted to look at what Aaron has been up to, you search for him and you get all the different ones. So hopefully this makes all the material available on our website and on YouTube much more approachable for people. They can find um, what they need. Okay, so then I'll see if I can get back to my presentation. There it is. And here we go. Right, so when it's up, if there's something you're missing, something confusing, please let us know. Your feedback does make a difference. <coughs> For this year, there's, um, and I'm not going to try and show you what the QR code looks like because it's <laughs> too difficult. Um, but please either fill out the papers or um, 
go online and make a statement about the presentations that you see here. I also promise to tell you that at the reception desk there's a list where you can sign up for sharing taxis to, um, to the station once you leave. That's another feedback we got last time that people would like that. We are not arranging it like we did in Portugal, but at least you can find uh, some pals you can, you can share with. Now the last thing I want to show you, talk to you about, is this. <coughs> it's a new APL book. Ray Polivka finished it just recently and proudly presented it to us at Minnebrook uh, two weeks ago. Uh, it's targeted at high school students. It's not published yet. It doesn't have an ISBN number. This is a preprint made with digital print. Um, but what's the uh, website for news on this? We are talking to Ray about various ways of getting it published and spread. And if you have high school kids or high school um, people in your vicinity that th you think could benefit from it, this is probably a good one. Ray is known for good educational material. And I think it was because Paul Mansour asked him a couple of years ago to make something for his kids. And Ray had no clue about kids in this day and age. So he actually went and taught at several high schools to get sort of an idea of where they are, how do you get to them. And this book is the result of that. I hope he'll be here with us next year. He couldn't be here this year. <coughs> so, but anyways, thank you all for being here. Um, special welcome to all you newcomers. I hope you get along career with APL um, and that you may have just as much fun as I've had. So enjoy Dialogue 23.